Hello and welcome back to another reaction. In this occasion, Wakfu episode 17 of the second season. Yeah, last time we saw a very romantic story, a very tragic story, but with a good ending, with a happy ending. Uh, we saw this guy who was uh, protecting uh, the fountain because if you get close to that, you will become in this kind of weird creatures, uh, very fussy creatures that are incapable of speaking. So therefore, you cannot tell anybody else, oh, it's me, uh, or we're getting transformed by this, and let's attack that. No. So, yes. Again, I don't know, because this has been recorded before the last episode has been published, of course. I don't know if the guy really just erased his own mind uh, to save the frustration, not seeing uh, his love again, or his thanks to the fountain, or I don't know. I still don't know. Hopefully you answered those questions before, because yes, I'm really curious about that. And it seems kind of be of a... I don't want to say filler, because this doesn't feel like filler. It feels everything that this needs to be done before getting into the major plot. Uh, we need to uh, learn a little bit more about characters. We need to see our characters grow a little bit. In this case, uh, we saw grew a little bit of uh, Evangeline. Because, yes, before that she was frustrated because we were just thinking teachers helping everybody uh, that encountered, that we encountered and all that. So, yeah, that's why it's taking us all this uh, long time to uh, get the Dolphus back. So, but in that moment, say, of course, yes, but this is something important. Because this is kind of relevant or kind of similar of what happened to her. That yes, she needs to rescue the love of his of her life. In this case, it was Pon Pon for her. But in the case of the other girl, it was well, this guy who was uh, protecting the fountain. I don't recall his name. Sorry about that. But yeah, she kind of saw herself. And nobody else was helping her at the beginning. Of course, later on, it was obviously that they were helping. But yeah, she offered her help because she is not, and I mean the girl in the village, was not as strong as her. It wasn't as strong as Evangeline. Because yes, Evangeline is amazingly strong, amazingly agile. Uh, she is capable of doing things herself. Yes, she is not perfect. No, of course not. And it will be a boring character if she was perfect. But she needs all of the. Uh, she needs to be helped too. But anyway, yes, this was a sense of duty, and especially one for her, because it was kind of similar to her situation, as I said before. So that's why it was important for her to help this other girl. And yes, they did a lot for this village, not just for her. She was kind of the catalyst for the help. But they helped the rest of the village by defeating this kind of water monster, that's water warm, thanks to the amazing power of Hugo, because yes, Hugo has been proving again and again that he is a very capable hero, even at his short age. My guess is being an Elia Trops help a lot, and especially being one of the first original Elia Trops helps a lot in this case. But anyway, yeah, I think I have spoken of about that in the last episode, so yeah, let's just cut all of this and watch the next one, shall we? No! <laughs> oh, really? But... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay? What? Yeah. Okay, they are far away from Sadida, and Sadida is having something important, apparently. Okay. Okay, she is very, very careful. Yeah, you need to be careful about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's going to flirt? Of course. <laughs> okay, this is very romantic, very cutesy. Yeah, that is good. Yeah, that's true. 
Toi aussi un jour tu connaîtras ça. Oh. Et toi Ruel, t'as déjà eu une amoureuse Ah my god, yeah. Yo. Seriously Amalia Oh, really What Of course I don't believe you. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> The flower smells fishy to me. Désolé Eva, les plantes c'est pas vraiment ma spécialité. Je suis un yacht, pas un. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Holy. Okay. Pompon. Oh boy. Yes, exactly. They're cross. I knew it. All right. No, dude, they are not rogues. What? Okay, don't change that so suddenly. I see Ragmar before. Those are the Ragmar guys, yes. Oh, <laughs> they are so used to pay for everything, yes. Of course. Okay, this is getting good. Yes. Of course, yeah, this guy is well to call, way to call. No. Nope, the Eliatrov is not. Oh, the Eliatrov, of course, killed me, yeah, sure. It was the Eliatrov, yes. Oh, only, yes, that's true. All the kingdoms, okay! I recognize a few, but not a lot of them. Un nouveau peuple va bientôt faire son apparition. Le monde en sera changé. C'est à nous tous de faire en sorte que cet événement soit une fête. Je laisse la parole au roi des Eliatrops. Oh boy! Okay! I think I have an idea, but what the hell? Holy! Pompon is really strong! Yes! Dude, seriously, calm down! Oh! Oh boy! Okay! Oh, this looks kind of different! I don't know why, but it looks different. Oh! He's not after you, I think he's after Pompon. Yes! Oh, Pompon, you're making a huge mistake! Look at the Yuko's speed! Seriously, he's able to... But yeah, the animation in here is amazing. Okay, this is not an easy target as before. Oh boy. Yes. Oh, I don't think that is going to be enough to... Yeah. Yes. Yes! Yes! La célèbre guerrière de la confrérie du tofu. Yes, they are! Okay, that's a fair question. Si ma mémoire est bonne et je sais qu'elle l'est. How many? Plusieurs dizaines de milliers. Holy! Ten of thousands! Yes! Okay, what is... There are a lot of children! Okay, yeah! A true fail? What is that? 
Ok, why so much enthusiasm? Oh, holy! <laughs> He's getting really hype! Oh, <laughs> seriously? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah! They want to go. C'est entendu comme ça. Je m'occupe de chercher du côté de Havreport et de la foire du Troule. Si je la retrouve. Très bien. Bonne chance et bon courage pour votre quête. Okay, this was resolved quite easily. <laughs> I thought they'd never leave. Allez, reprenons la route avant que la nuit tombe. Uh, Eva, c'est qui cette Cléo? Yes, who is that one? Tu te souviens de moi? Is it one from the dreams? Oh, it was the sister. Okay. Ta sœur. Ta une sœur évangélique. Okay, what? Why he's angry? Oh, he never told him, of course. Oh, they are trying to save the problem. Oh. Okay, yes. Oh boy, yeah. Yeah, but there is something deeper in there, man. Seriously. Yeah, but there is something else in there. Oh, the Eliakou, yes! Oh, boy, yeah, now there are a lot more problems. Yes! He is getting really angry. Oh! Holy Adamai, calm down! Oh boy! Okay, this is a lot more tense. De croire à ces histoires de monde dans les étoiles, soit, mais qu'on nous demande pas d'accepter tout et n'importe quoi sans. Oh boy! Ok, yes! Yes, everybody wants that! Oh, of course, I want to see how Kill will react to this. He has wisdom, so he knows what. Okay, yes, this is true. Oh, that is harsh. Okay, we're finally arrived at place, but not in the best moment, let's be honest. Oh boy! What? What the hell? Okay, okay, I'm gonna stop it there because, yeah, spoilers. This is an interesting episode. It has a lot more going on in there than the beginning tell us. We see a little bit of problem between re the relationship between uh, Evangeline and Pompon and other stuff in the background. Especially with the 12 kingdoms. But yeah, as always, I'm going to watch this again and be back in my comments. See you in a bit. Okay, I'm back. I just watched actually several times this episode because there is a lot of information to get around this. Um, yeah, it is an interesting one, especially because now we're seeing consequences or future consequences of what they are planning to do. Uh, we are not seeing them just in this moment. We are not just seeing this suddenly, of course, but we are seeing something else in here. We're seeing that there is something deeper, uh, deeper into all 
that has been planned from, I don't know, half, uh, I don't know, episode 12, I think it was, when Kill Bill uh, appeared in this uh, animation. So, yeah, now they are treating this event, that huge event, because, yes, it's seriously huge, as it should be. Uh, they should not be treated lightly because, yeah, this is going to happen and it's happening and it doesn't matter. No, there is something deeper in here. There is something a lot uh, that will cause a lot of trouble, a lot of uh, things that are unexpected. There are uh, several stuff that needs to be planned. And this is an episode which is showing us that planning. Not in its entirety, of course, that will be boring. But they are showing us information that we need to know. Uh, we start again in the Kingdom of Sarida. At first I was kind of confused because, okay, they returned that easily. We didn't saw how they recovered the egg. But no, actually there is something else happening in Sarida. At the same time, they are very far, far, far away from, uh, well, from Sarida, from the Kingdom. And we saw the Prince of Brachmar. When we saw uh, when we saw him for the first time, when we saw him in the uh, Brachmar episode, in the Booth Ball episode, I thought he was the king. But no, actually, he is the prince. I don't know if he is the maximum authority in Brachmar. Perhaps there is no king and he is, well, the maximum authority back then. Uh, or if the king is his uh, father and if he wasn't bothered to come or something or another. Yes. Uh, he's kind of mistreated, or at least I think he believes himself to be mistreated, because, yeah, he's not received with all this uh, happiness and all this, well, I don't know, in a very royal way. He's been treated kind of a normal guest. So, yeah, he's kind of angry in that moment. But we are just saw we just saw a glimpse of that. We return to the rest of the group, Hugo and his friends. They are traveling towards another place, another city. In this case, I don't remember the name, sorry. But it's important. But they are using the most indirect way, or at least the most hidden way, because there are rogues in the roads. Kind of rhyme. And there are rogues in the roads, and they need to be careful because they are with a princess. And yes, of course, in the moment the rogues find out that there's, uh, but she is a princess, they are going to try to keep her to ask for a ransom and all that. Yes, it's understandable the reasoning uh, behind the actions of Evangeline. Why they, why she choose the uh, longest route or the most indirect route or the hidden route. Let's say we saw a little bit of practice for Hugo uh, in case, well. He's trying to control his rays of wax full of this energy, but alongside his portals. And we saw it's kind of a funny scene. The first one is very kind of epic, let's say, receive a more epic treatment. In the second one, when Ruel gets involved, it's a silly one. It reminds me of the old Looney Tunes cartoons because of the music and because of the way everything moves in that place. Uh, they kind of annoy uh, Amalia because, yes, they, Ruel was after the flower, but he miscalculated and he, he's at her ass. So, yeah, luckily she didn't saw them and <laughs> they kind of went away free of consequences. And yes, we saw again a little bit of the attitude of uh, Pompon and Evangeline. I thought it was just a cutesy moment for being, well, a cutesy moment. We're seeing flirting with each other, uh, Pon Pon being uh, chivalrous to her, uh, giving her flowers and all that. And it's a silly moment, but it's a cute moment. A very romantic way, but not again. Yes, it's in your face, but it's not annoying because it's not constant that every single episode we're seeing this kind of crap. Perhaps it's annoying for the characters because they saw them. Uh, more frequently, but not annoying for the audience, which is something fine. And yes, I love the attitude that Amelia takes. Oh, they are at it again. This is amazing. And Ruel saying, well, this is love. They are in love, so that's why they treat each other. And perhaps one day you are going to meet somebody that will be, treat you like that and uh, make you feel like that. She kind of blushes, hiding her face. And then we saw you. Again, perhaps those are my shipping goggles that are on. Perhaps it's something that the only one who's seeing is me, or perhaps the shippers of these two guys. But again, the coincidence behind everything that, yes, Amalia is kind of blushing at the moment, 
remembering perhaps Hugo or something like that. Or perhaps again, it's nothing. Perhaps it's nothing. And I'm just seeing what I want to see, what I want to believe that is happening here. We have a little bit of a... I thought it was serious discussion when <laughs> Ruel announced that he had several lovers and he was even about to get married. And this is the moment it was, oh, wow, seriously? But no, they start to laugh. And I mean, Hugo and Amalia both start to laugh because they don't believe. And yes, the reasoning, according to Amalia, is because he saw the price of the dress and the ring and just say, oh, no, forget about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a real way. So, yes. But this is when another part of the episodes of the episode, sorry, gets interesting. Evangeline and Pompon kind of have a discussion because yes, the flower that Pompon gave her it's carnivorous at my guess and it bite either her lips or her nose. I don't know, because she was covering all that area at that moment. So yeah, I'm not sure about that. And she gets a little bit angry. Pompon doesn't understand, doesn't understand how to flirt. He tries, he really tries really hard to flirt with uh, Evangeline, but he's not that good at that. He's good in combat, of course he is. But he's not good at this romance. And yeah, Ruel is giving kind of a, I don't know if a terrible advice or a good advice, that you need to be admired by the woman and you need to keep your distance uh, so she doesn't get bored of you. He doesn't understand. Pompon doesn't understand this. But once he explains it in a way that is about combat, he understands better or misunderstands something. When he believed that he understood, well, he believed is not correct. When he believed that he understood what he was saying, Problem arrives. Trouble arrives in the form of three crass riding kind of eagles. I'm not entirely sure about the race of the eagles or if there is a specific name for these eagles. And they they are not sure if they are going to be attacked. Nothing uh, showing us that they are going to attack. They are just observing them. But of course, Pompon being Pompon starts to attack and again, very spectacular. Uh, I always get surprised by the amount of power that Pompon can have. He starts to attack without reasoning because, yes, they do not attack. They were just observing because they were looking for somebody else. Eva tries to warn him, but of course Pompon didn't listen because it's way too far. And he involves a celestial sword, I think it was. And that's when the, uh, when the episode cuts to another scene and returning to Sarina. We saw a little bit of uh, <laughs> the misbehavior of Gorgo. Of Gorgo. Uh, we have a discussion, and uh, yes, I saw one of the extra scenes of the last scenes of, this, of the episodes when Gorgo kind of is kicked by one of. He looks like a mule or something like that. <laughs> but yeah, I love how they say all of this. That, uh, yeah, he's trying to hunt down his food, but the only thing has been eating is kicks. <laughs> I love that. A little bit of humor it delivered in a very dry way, because yes, Adama is not very happy taking care of Gorgo, or a very young Gorgo. Yeah, it's funny. And yes, we saw a little bit of background information, that actually Bonta has been attacked by another dragon. And yeah, this was before the Ogres, so yes, tragedy after tragedy for that poor city. Kilby is kind of knowledgeable in uh, dragons, in legends of dragons, because my guess that is what his people is interested in. Even though he was trapped inside that dimension without time for a long, long time, which is kind of absurd to say, because yes, it was a long time for this world, but not a long time for him. It almost well, no time uh, passes for him. And yes, we're starting to see the reunion 
of the Twelve Kingdoms. Of course, uh, the Sarida, they are being a gracious host, delivering uh, food and beverage to the leaders of these Twelve Kingdoms. I don't want to say kings, because perhaps some of them are kings, some of them are well, another denomination of that. Uh, we saw again the particularity of Black Mar, that yes, they were offered a, a beverage, they weren't charging anything, they didn't, not to, they didn't need to, de to give the money, but they are so accustomed that Everything costs. That yes, they need to give something for whatever reason, for the service or for the food or for the beverage or for whatever, for whatever reason. And yes, this is very in touch with from what we saw of Rachmar before. It makes sense for this to happen. <laughs> and yes, the the servant is kind of well, kind of I don't know where it out it is, but yeah, she has entered no matter what. Uh, the king of the Salida arrives, and we saw. The members of the other kingdoms kind of being in awe by the dragon and by the Eliatrop. At first I thought, that, wait, there is no Eliatrop there, it's no Yugo there. But yeah, of course, I forgot that Kilby is an Eliatrop too. <laughs> so yeah, so, oh yes, you're right, Kilby is an Eliatrop. It's kind of funny my reaction in that moment. And yes, it's fascinating all the races here. I did not recognize most of them. I recognize true. Well, not the races, but the series they belong to. I recognize uh, the ones from Bakmar, from Bakmar because, well, we saw them before. And I recognize the one from the Pandawad, because, well, it's obvious. A Pandawad is pretty obvious what she was. But I did not recognize anybody else. I know, oh, of course, I did recognize another one, the Crab one. Because, yes, we saw her in the last few episodes of the last season. We saw her back then. I do not recognize the rest. Uh, I later on we saw some of them. Uh, we saw that there were sacriers there. There are any tropes? No, any tropes? Sorry, any tropes? Uh, of course, the crass, the Sarida, Of course, there are the hosts, uh, the Brahmars. I don't know the races, the Yops, the very muscular guy. Uh, the Shalors, because it was mentioned, and I don't remember the rest, especially the girl, the kind of very uh, queeny like that is sitting next to the crow one. The ones, I think the ones that has the kind of a skeletal faces are the Shalors, or perhaps it's the other one who never saw, we never saw her, uh, his or her face, it sounds like a he, the green one. And I don't know, I don't recall, no, sorry, the one with the skeletal face, they are not the Shalors, they are the others, yeah. Sorry about that, there is a little confusion. There are too many races here, and yes, I'm still a noob for the knowledge of this one. And of course, the uh, Panda Was and all that. I do not recognize the ones with the blue hair. Uh, yeah, those intrigue me. Who are they? What is the role in, uh, the role in this world? And all of that. Again, before entering completely into this one, uh, I do not recognize another one that is sitting next to the Yop one. Really, if you can explain that without really giving a lot of spoilers, uh, I will be so grateful for that, guys. Yes, of course, uh, Kilby is about to start his explanations, but since the audience already know what he is going to say, of course, we cut back to our heroes. Because, yes, it is absurd to hear the explanation again once you saw it. What is, uh, again, amazing is the amount of control that Kilby has of his Wagfu. He can create a lot of stuff with his Wagfu, not just portals. He can change the shape of this. Let's be honest, it's kind of a light. He can shape light into the form he wants to. That is why he's so impressive. I saw it as light being changed and being transformed by the mind of somebody. That's why I'm so impressed by that. Perhaps it's something similar to what I'm thinking. That's why I'm so impressed. Anyway, as I said before, we returned to our heroes and we saw the attack. I did not understand what the Celestial Sword was, but literally, it's kind of a Thor attack. Yes, he invoked thunder upon his enemies. It's amazing. Pumpkin is amazing. And we saw a very strange kind of battle which, of course, only involves Pompon and the Crass. And yeah, Pompon is kicking their asses. Uh, 
luckily, uh, Evangeline, well, not Evangeline, uh, Amelia is saving one of the crafts and two her plants, and you is trying to stop uh, uh, Popo to attacking the other one, because yes, he already defeated one of them, along with the bird he was riding, and uh, you was trying to catch up with Popo. Again, I am surprised by the amount of speed that Hugo has, being this young. Yes, of course, it should be obvious because uh, in his fight against Ashelor, against uh, Nox, he was able to break. He was able to break the spell of the stopping time. He was moving way too fast, and Shalor and the Shalor, of course, Nox was impressed by this. Of course, you are trying to reason with Pompon. Pompon is too much of a yob. Yes, I'm sorry to use that word. It's too much of a yob to understand really what is going on. He knocks down Hugo thanks to his maneuver that he did, and Hugo is trying to again catch up with him. He uh, uh, arrives on time, or he rides the bird on time, after a very spectacular way of seeing or following Pompon uh, to save him from one of the arrows of the crass. And he went and tried to reason with the other crab the one who is still in his right. He said, okay, we are not your enemies. We are coming with uh, Evangeline the Crack, who is the personal guard of the Princess of Salida, uh, Amalia, I don't remember her full name, and this is kind of calmed them down. Uh, Pompon, of course, stop, uh, being, of, uh, stop attacking the other guy because you go finally uh, reason or reach the reasoning to it with him, and we saw another event. Uh, they land, of course, they land, but before that, we return to the council and all the problems that would create the bringing back of the rest of the children. Of course, at the beginning, all the 12 kingdoms are kind of fighting for uh, receiving all the people uh, of the Eliatrops. Because, yes, of course, perhaps he's part of the good heart of the people. But perhaps because they gain a lot of power with Elia Trops on their side. Perhaps the Yops are not thinking that ahead. Because yeah, they are Yops. But the rest of the races, they are kind of, yeah, kind of trying to gain something from that. The other one, the other races that are kind of, uh, kind of, yeah, believe, it's believable that they are giving in in the good, the good heart is the Osimondas, I think it was. Uh, give me a moment, please. Yeah, I check it. It's Osamondas, not Osimondas. Anyway, yes, they are kind of be believable that they are really welcoming the rest. Because, yes, they admire the dragons. They respect a lot the dragons. So, yeah, everybody has their own intentions, but... A question that, well, a couple of questions that were uh, answered in that moment. That first, are the Elliot Trops immortal? Something I asked before that, because yes, uh, Kilby is not, uh, well, he hasn't grown, he hasn't aged at all, but he said, no, the children are not immortal. The dimension they are in, uh, they have no time. There is no time inside the dimension. So that's why I am as young or I haven't aged at all uh, during my time in that uh, dimension. Again, it's weird to say time and dimension without time. And the other one is, of course, uh, if the Mikasum are a threat towards uh, this world, and of course the Ogranax, who was the one who was really reaching this world, was a threat. Of course that was not, or according to Kilby, they are not a threat anymore. And... Uh, um, Organax uh, was destroyed before that. Uh, another question is that uh, what about the ship they arrived in? Uh, the artifact they used to arrive in this world. It has been destroyed. It is not of no use. I don't know if Kilby is being sincere or if he's just hiding the ship because it's way too advanced for them to have it. I don't know which one is this, uh, which one is true. Of course, there was an extra question. That there was another question that really needs to be answered. How many children were in or are inside of this dimension? And the answer is quite frightening for the rest of the twelve kingdoms. Tens of thousands. There is, or we're not given an exact number. But there are a lot. I'm not. I don't think there are 10,000, 
Are there 20,000, 30,000, 40,000? It could be from 10,000, but since it's at several, perhaps it's even from 20,000 to perhaps 90,000 children inside that dimension, which is a lot of population. Especially for this world, because yes, when you conceive that number in our modern world, yeah, it's not that much. You can keep those children in a city or uh, spread these children in several cities, and still, they, they will all be inside a country. But in this world, even in a city as huge as Bonta, I don't think they can take all that amount of children to protect them and to feed them just nearly willy. It is, it is a difficult task to feed that many mouths, especially because they are, they won't be able to contribute to your society in a lot of time. So yeah, this is difficult for them to accept. But then we go back to our hero. Now they are asking for forgiveness because yes, sorry I attack you, I didn't know, I shouldn't have attacked you because yeah, all that, yeah, um, Pom Pom being a yelp in this moment. And Evangeline kind of explaining uh, all these reasons. And of course, the leader of these three guys is kind of happy to see Evangeline because she's a legend among them. And again, kind of flirting in that moment, something that is, uh, well, Pon Pon is not very happy with that, but he kind of hold back. But I guess he hold back because, yes, I heard them enough, so yeah, sorry about that. I'm angry, but I'm not going to do anything against you guys. Sorry about that. Uh, we saw that, and they are looking for somebody else. They are happy to meet her even with the conditions, of course, that were happening here. Uh, and yes, we receive, or they receive, better yet, uh, an explanation that, yes, the magic of these uh, people is kind of an omission in uh, Sadida. And then we receive another bit of information. Uh, Cleophy. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Please correct me if I'm wrong. She is missing. She is at the surgery, Cleophy. And they are looking for her alongside with other crafts. She wants to be as famous as Evangeline. And she formed her own fellowship, the Fellowship of the Black Arrow, I think. They are looking for her for some reason, because yes, my guess at the surgery is an important part of the kingdom, but they need to really look for at the surgeon so they cannot give information. Amalia is not very happy. She knows this girl, obviously, because she knows Evangeline from a long time ago, so it makes sense for her to know who she is. We still don't know who she is. It was kind of suspicious for me, but I didn't want to say anything. And I was thinking of the girl that we saw in the trippy scene with Evangeline when they entered the Tree of Life. Yeah, I was kind of thinking of her in that, in that moment. Yeah, but we figured out that there is a fair near the town they are going to visit. And everybody is excited for their own reason. Hugo, because it's the first time he's going to visit the fair. Uh, Pom Pom, because of the gladiator... Uh, kind of gladiator scene that they're going to be seeing. There is a gladiator case, I guess, or kind of a coliseum or something along those lines. And of course, because Ruel brings so, much, so many memories of that fair. And everybody wants to see. Amalia doesn't want to because she doesn't want to see this girl, Cleophy. She is not in good terms with her. The thread, the tree. <laughs> the three of the other guys, the other crass, uh, just go away and went to patrol. And uh, they leave them alone. This is when the information really drop. We now know for certain that Cleophy is the sister of Evangeline. Nobody knew that except Amalia, because again, obvious reasons. But Pompon is angry in this moment. And I think for a good reason. Before that, we return to the console that is having place, taking place in the Sadida Kingdom. The one who is steering more problems for uh, Kilby and the Sadida people is the Brahmar Prince. He said that this is very dangerous. How? They are going to accommodate a lot of people, but more importantly, 
these are dangerous people. For him, he considered them dangerous. Why? Because a children, children, a child went into his city, into his kingdom, and caused a rebellion. One child of these people. That's what makes it very dangerous. And he is angry towards them because this is something he needs to take care of. I don't think this is a very hardworking person, the, the prince of Brackmar. So he needs to do a lot of work. And yes, Hugo is quite dangerous, let's say, if you took the raw power of Hugo. He is just a child and he's, what, 12, 13? And the power that he possesses is a lot. So that's why he is so dangerous. Now imagine a lot of uh, children that possess the same power. That is why he is so kind of scared of the Elia tropes. And yes, and I must, uh, not an I, um, Master Yori kind of say, are you a, a scared of children? I said, Elia dropped you. Yes, but they saved the world. But he is when he brings another topic that, yes, he saved the world, but the world was in danger because of an artifact of these people, the Elia Q. That's what makes it dangerous for him. These are valid points for the people. One of the kingdoms have a huge advantage above the others. The Sadida kingdom possess the Elia cube. Of course, they are not going to use it. They are not that kind of people. But I understand their point of view. You cannot be trusting that much, especially in an artifact that is so dangerous for all the damage it causes. It's understandable. I understand the rest of the kingdom. Of course, I'm more sympathetic towards the Elia tropes and towards the Sadida because I'm close to them thanks to the information it was given in past episodes. But the rest of the kingdom, it's understandable as to why they're behaving the way they are behaving. And yes, the look on Kilby He's not of a friendly one. And I wanted to know what he was about to say. But of course, before that happened, we returned to our heroes. And we saw that really Pompon is really angry towards Evangeline because she didn't share the information, private information with him. They are in a relationship, but she didn't share this information. In this moment, he feels betrayed. Because Evangeline indirectly is saying that she doesn't trust him. Of course, that wasn't her intention. I don't believe that was her intention. Perhaps it's hard for her to talk about her sister. That doesn't change the fact of the way that Pompon is feeling. And I understand his feeling. And they have a very difficult discussion. Because yes, Pompon believes that he's just the clown. He's the bottom of all the jokes of all of them. And he's getting angry because of that. Again, I understand Pompon's feeling in this moment. I, he doesn't understand why Evangeline is with him. If, he, if she doesn't trust him that much. We are cutting this scene, a very important scene, a very important discussion between these two. With the end of the episode. They find the fair and they are about to enter. Evangeline is of course not happy with this because... She's, there is something else in here, something deeper in here. And yes, I love these scenes because yes, they create drama, but the drama is not just random drama. It makes sense for it to be dramatic in this moment. I understand the feelings of Pompon, how he feels betrayed, how he feels the way he's feeling right now. And I understand the feeling of Evangeline because yes, perhaps she wants to tell him all about her family, but she didn't find the correct time. 
this is a really good episode that was increasing this quality along we were going. And I cannot wait for the next episode. But of course, I need to wait and stop here. Yeah, I have a stuff to do. But anyway, as always, I really exhausted the topic of this one. A very fascinating one. But as always, guys, thank you so much for your uh, comments, your likes, your views, and your subscriptions. If you want to be a subscriber, click on the button for subscription and on the bell so you can get notifications. And, of course, if you want to follow me on Twitter, the link is in the description below. If you want to share this video, I will be so grateful to you guys. Uh, so, yeah, thank you so much for your attention. And, well, see you on the next one. Bye.